New Paltz is located in the Hudson Valley area of New York and is known for its scenic mountains and funky town. The town of New Paltz is home to about 14,000 people with about 7,000 students enrolled at the local college, SUNY New Paltz. But the history of New Paltz traces back much further to the time of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s. This movement inspired followers to separate from the Roman Catholic Church. The followers of these newfound religious ideas were the Huguenots. Unfortunately, the Protestants faced persecution, which forced them to seek refuge. Some of the families who were amongst the Huguenots that are familiar to many on the SUNY New Paltz campus are Bevier, Hasbrook, Dubois, Dale, and the Fever. After a long journey for religious freedom, the Huguenots sailed to the Dutch colony, New Netherland, in North America, which was eventually taken over by the English and renamed New York. Many names of the members of the Huguenots have been used for buildings on the SUNY New Paltz campus. Recently, there has been much controversy in a protest largely led by students enrolled at SUNY New Paltz with a close look beyond the history of the Huguenots' escape from the religious persecution. The director of public programming for Historic Huguenot Street found that the average family amongst those originally settled in New Paltz owned about one to four slaves. President Donald P. Christian of SUNY New Paltz initiated the process of re-evaluating the names of the buildings in the Hasbro complex, which has gained support of students. Ultimately, the College Council met on November 1, 2018 and decided to postpone any decisions regarding the names changes until the spring of 2019. This is actually the first time that this has really happened, that there's been such a momentum and it's such a, a sense of empowerment on the students' parts where I actually thought the names would change of the dorms. Um, I was able to be at the first meeting, which was in the big lecture center, where um, a lot of students did speak about their issues, and they were actually the director of Historic Huguenot Street, the president of the board, other people, who were also very emotional because of their attachment to their family names. So I think on both sides there's a lot of emotion because everyone has an issue. Yes, the Huguenots were the people that brought education to this area and financially they were the ones that brought the money together for the classical school, the academy, they helped bring about the normal school, but the issue of the patentees and the first people that came here, um, they were slaveholders and there's no getting around that point that they were slaveholders. So I, my feeling about the council was kind of confused because when I left, I thought this was going, this was a no-brainer that we were going to pass this. We had the support of the students, the faculty, and the president of the university to see the students be ignored like that and not heard was really frustrating because I was so proud of them. I, you know, I just felt like, yes, they're having a voice here. They need to have that voice. I think it, it goes along with the climate right now where people are looking back and saying, wait a minute, we don't want to, we want to acknowledge what happened, but we don't want to continue in that same path. We interviewed eboard member Pink and Senator Esther, part of the Student Association. Here are their thoughts. Hi, my name is Esther Joseph. My role on campus, I am currently a part of the Student Association. I sit as a current senator. My name is Pink. I'm a part of the Student Association. I'm the Council of Organizations Chair in New Paltz. I'm a strong believer in that compassion wasn't invented in the 21st century. Um, that's something that people argue that like, oh, it was a thing of the time. But again, compassion wasn't invented in the 21st century. People did not have to participate in slave owning. If I knew about this before I came to New Paltz, honestly, I wouldn't even have came to this school because, and I'm surprised that it's been years and a lot of students on this campus are not knowledgeable on the fact that, you know, these names are on the buildings that they live in, on the buildings that they eat and sleep in, study in, and most of them are not aware. When I first heard about it, I mean, I was kind of like appalled, like to think, I have never lived in Hasbro Complex, but I've been to Hasbrook and um, I've been in majority of the buildings over there. Um, so to think that we were stepping foot in somewhere where like, for me personally, 
like that has a huge history tie for me like um to think that they own slaves so it was like a really big like wow the names are still there because you know it's history and they want us to know that you know this did happen and these people yeah they found a new pulse and they contributed to this school and their families are still in the village and still reside in there but for me to be a sophomore and still haven't heard about the history or not knowing about the situation I told them I found that I found that it, it's ridiculous after hearing all the students inputs and and their feelings and their emotions towards the situation and for them to still not understand and to postpone this decision I I, <laughs> I was whew. The thing about postponement is that it's not a no, um, and I like to take that with like a little, like a little bit of faith, in the sense that like we still have time to keep pushing this issue forward. Um, I also do believe that if the vote had taken place that day, that we would have gotten a no. So for me personally, I think that the postponement just gives us more time, more time to regather and more time to think. There are descendants of the family who did good things, um, like the argument with Abraham Hasbrook, one of the descendants of the Hasbrook family helps the Jordan of Truth get her son back. Um, but those things do stand to be true. I think ahead in the fact that these names aren't after the family, they're after the individuals. And the individuals of those times did own slaves. We contacted members of the Hasbrook family Robert and Derek Hasbrook. Here are their thoughts. Robert Hasbrook, president of the Hasbrook Family Association, submitted his responses via email. Here are his responses. When asked about the town of New Pulse's historical ties to slavery, he said, I have written articles about it in the Hasbrook Family Newsletter, and I am very supportive of Historic Huguenot Street's emphasis on publicizing and educating visitors about the African-American experience and role in the development of this area. I believe these efforts make the name change movement misguided and unnecessarily divisive. When asked if his perception of his ancestors has changed given the recent events, he said, no change, I am proud of my ancestry, certainly not of the early one's slave ownership, but understanding of it in the light of the pervasive mentality of that era throughout the North. When asked about how he felt the Hasbrook issue was being handled, he said, the emphasis on slave owning is unwarranted with respect to the era of the founding families. When asked about a message he would like to convey for those in favor of the name change, he said, fortunately, we have progressed a long way since then. Although more still needed, it is unrealistic to project the standards of our current value system onto those of long ago who lived honorably by the standards of that era under a different system. I am a, a, an 11th uh, generation descendant of, of both Abraham and Jean Hasbrook. Uh, Abraham on my father's side and Jean on my mother's side. You know, on, on my mother's side, in addition to having a Hasbrook uh, as a maternal great as a maternal grandmother, um, her history uh, lineage traces back to Peregrine White, the, the child that was born on the Mayflower. And you know the Pilgrims weren't saints either. So uh, you know, I, mean, I think we all um, uh, have learned and continue to learn, uh, and you know, hopefully we take those learnings and apply them to the world. That we have today and, and how we behave going forward. So that that's my that's my hope in all this. I, I think I think it's disappointing um, as anyone would uh, I think react to uh, to that. That I think we're all proud of our of our families and and uh, of their uh, accomplishments and and uh, uh, in history. Um, and you know, and, and, and every family uh, has some has some uh, you know mistakes in, it, in its uh, in, in its history as well. The optimist in me, uh, I'd like to say that we've learned, and and uh, the twenty first century is 
is you know better than than any of the prior centuries. But um, <laughs> some days you pick up the newspaper and um, you kind of wonder if we've learned. But uh, we all better keep trying. All the racism, all the stuff, the horror that we see now is caused by this frustration. When you see angry people, you know, blowing down, you know, throwing things through windows, it's this pent up frustration because people don't hear them and people need to listen. I want to end it at that.